Hello, and welcome to the Word of Truth, our cable show that's designed to better help you understand your Bible. My name is Frank, and I'll be your teacher for today, and reading for me today will be Brother, I Brother Ezekiel from the House of Jacob Bible Study class. The title of today's lesson, brothers and sisters, is Take Heed That No Man Deceive You. Jesus, in the 24th chapter of Matthew, gave us warning signs about his second coming, brothers and sisters, and what would be happening in the world just prior to the time when he was getting ready to come back. And the one of the very first things that he told us was to take heed that no man deceive you. We're going to go into Matthew, the 24th chapter, and we're going to read where the master himself tells us, brothers and sisters, the very first thing he tells us is to take heed that no man deceive you. And the reason he told us this, brothers and sisters, is because he knew that in the end times, brothers and sisters, there would be much deception going on. So we're going to start this out in Matthew, the 24th chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to, came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There should not be left here one stone upon another that should not be thrown down. And that actually came about, brothers and sisters, in 70 A.D. when Titus, the son of Emperor Vespasian, he besieged uh, Jerusalem and led, led away captive the children of Israel. Keep reading. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Excellent questions, brothers and sisters. Excellent questions. Tell us, when shall these things be? When will, those th when will, when will the temple be destroyed? And what will be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Keep reading. And Jesus answered the sentence to them. The, pay attention, brothers and sisters. The very first thing you hear is the priority, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read that. And Jesus answered the sentence to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. The very first thing he tells them, brothers and sisters, is to take heed that no man deceives you, brothers and sisters. And he tells them that because in the end time, in this particular time that we're living in, brothers and sisters, there's much deception going on. Keep reading. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And many are coming in his name, brothers and sisters, and they are deceiving many. How is it that they're coming in his name and deceiving many, brothers and sisters? Because they will Jesus and hallelujah you, you to death, but they will not tell you any of Jesus' doctrine, brothers and sisters. Skip down to verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And he says, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many, brothers and sisters. And they are here in droves, brothers and sisters. We are the only nation of people where you will find a church on each corner and two in the middle of the block. Mm -hmm. Scripture says they have a zeal for the word of God, but not according to knowledge, brothers and sisters. Churches everywhere in our community but they're not doing it according to the way the Lord tells them to do it. Let's go to Matthew, the seventh chapter. He said, many going to come in his name, and they're going to deceive many. Matthew 7, and pick it up, brother, at verse 13. Matthew 7 and 13. Go ahead. Enter ye in at the straight gate. And this is Jesus talking. And in my Bible, whenever Jesus is speaking, they have that in red. Go ahead. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and fruit there be that find it. So, brothers and sisters, when you see all of those people in them mega churches and all of that, brothers and sisters, and you would think that, oh, this person, this, this preacher, he's a dynamic preacher, and he's doing this, and he's doing that. But that's the, that's the wide gate, brothers and sisters. That's the wide gate. Go ahead and read. 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But read, read that 14 for me. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. He says, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way 
which leadeth unto life, eternal life, and few there be that find it. Read that next verse. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving in wool. He says, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing. They come unto you looking like a lamb, but they speak like a dragon. You can go in Revelations in 13, Revelation 13 and read that for yourself. He says, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Skip down to verse 21. Now everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter to the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. He says, not everyone that cometh unto me and saith, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Keep reading. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we now prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Well, these is religious folks here. These are religious people. These ain't street people, brothers and sisters. These are religious people. These are people that have been sitting in the church all of their lives, brothers and sisters. They grew up uh, in the children's choir and on the junior usher board and then the usher board and the nurses stations and all of that. They have been in church all of their life. They went to church Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You understand what I'm saying? These are religious people. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and, thy, and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name, in thy name done many wonderful works and watch what the Lord is going to say to them. Read, brother. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. Brothers and sisters, that's going to be a hard one, brothers and sisters. Because these people, these people have been deceived and they thought they had it right, brothers and sisters. They thinking that they're going to get eternal life and they're going to end up with eternal damnation. And why is it, brothers and sisters, because the people that the Lord set to shepherd the flock have not done their job, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Isaiah, the 29th chapter. The Lord commissioned the nation of people to teach the rest of the sons of Adam the word of God. And those people dropped the ball. You can read that in Exodus, the 19th chapter, verses 3 through 8, brothers and sisters. Then he gave us commandments in the Exodus, the 20th chapter, that we should follow. And if you follow those uh, commandments that are in Exodus, the 20th, you will get eternal life. Yes, sir. That's why he has them there, brothers and sisters. If you follow those, you will get eternal life. Let's go to Isaiah, the 29th chapter, and find out why the people are being deceived, brothers and sisters. Exodus 20, I'm sorry, Isaiah 29 and 9. Go ahead and read. Stay yourselves in wonder, cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. He says, stay yourselves in wonder, cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. This is because they're drinking out of that golden cup in Revelation, the 17th chapter, brothers and sisters. This is because they're uh, believing in bad doctrine, brothers and sisters. Keep reading. For the Lord have poured upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and have closed our eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, have ye covered. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. So we know that it is sealed unto the learned man, because the learned man will tell you that Jesus died on Good Friday and rose early Easter Sunday morning. And Jesus himself told you that just as, no, as Jonah was in the, well, uh, in the belly of the well for three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. And you can't get three days and three nights out of from Friday evening to Sunday morning under no type of arithmetic, brothers and sister. So the learned man, the book is sealed to him. Keep reading. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. 
And we know the unlearned man is not, uh, the book is sealed to him because he will tell you that Sunday is the Lord's Sabbath day when all throughout the Bible, uh, the Bible says that the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. So we know that the book is sealed to him. So what are they getting, brother? Keep reading. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as his people draw near with my draw near with me with their mouth and with their lips to honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men. And their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Matthew the fifteenth chapter. And here in this fifteenth chapter of Matthew, the Lord Himself is going to quote what we just read right there. Matthew 15, and pick it up at verse 1, brother. Go ahead. Then came to Jesus, scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying... And these are religious folks, brothers and sisters, scribes and Pharisees. Go ahead. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother, and he that curse the father and mother, let him die the death. And you'll find that in the Ten Commandments, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. You have made the commandment of God of none effect by your Tradition, brothers and sisters, keep reading. Ye hypocrites, where did Isaiah's prophesy of you saying? And this is what he's getting ready to quote. He's getting ready to quote Isaiah. Go ahead. This people draw of lying to me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. Commandments, precepts, one and the same, brothers and sisters. He says, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandment of men. So, brothers and sisters, here in this, uh, here in these, uh, this, this uh, 15 chapter, brothers and sisters, we have two different doctrines, brothers and sisters. We have the commandment of God, and we have the commandments of men, brothers and sisters. That is the same choice that he gave to Adam and Eve in the garden, brothers and sisters. You could eat of the tree of life and live forever, or you could eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and die forever, brothers and sisters. One is the commandment of God, and the other is the commandment of men. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's find out what the commandments of men cause, or what does the commandment of men make you do? Titus, the first chapter. So the commandments of God lead to righteousness and everlasting life. Let's find out what the commandments of men do. Titus 1, and pick it up at verse 10, brother. Go ahead. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Circumcision, that's Israel. Uncircumcision, that's everybody else. Go ahead. Whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they are not for filthy lucre's sake. Whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they are not for filthy money's sake. Go ahead. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Christians are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. What do commandments of men do? Turn it turns from, from the truth, brothers and sisters. And we got to find out, brothers and sisters, what is truth, brothers and sisters? Let's go to John, the 17th chapter. The Bible's definition of truth. Not my definition, not the house of Jacob definition, but the Bible's definition of what truth is. John 17 and pick it up at verse 13. Go ahead. And now come I to thee and these things that speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word and the world have hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. I pray not that, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but thou shouldest keepest them from the evil. 
They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So what is truth? The word of God, brothers and sisters. That's what truth is. Let's go to John, the first chapter. Flip back to John, the first chapter, and pick it up at verse 1. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So there goes that, uh, 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 that trilogy, brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. uh, that the, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost all being God. In the beginning was the Word. That's one. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's two, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Skip down to verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Skip down to verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Skip down to verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is the word of God, brothers and sisters. Read 18. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. One of the deceptions of today, brothers and sisters, is that uh, uh, the Father is in the Old Testament and, and Jesus is in the New. Jesus is the God of the Old and the New Testament, brothers and sisters. Yes, sir. Don't let them twist it up, brothers and sisters, and deceive you. Jesus is the God of the old and the new. Let's go to uh, Matthew, the fourth chapter. We're talking about religious folks that are deceiving the people, brothers and sisters. Religious folks that are deceiving the people. Matthew, the fourth chapter, and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward in hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made, to be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He said, but he answered and said, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, brothers and sisters, shall man live. Now, he was quoting Moses. Let's go and read it. Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. So far, he's quoted Isaiah. Now, he's quoting Moses. Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. And the amazing thing about it, brothers and sisters, is when you think about it, he is actually quoting himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because it says, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So he told the, the, the Holy Ghost what to say. The Holy Ghost gave it to these brothers, and they wrote it down. So he's actually quoting himself, brothers and sisters. Deuteronomy 8, pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness, to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord do a man live. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live, brothers and sisters. Let's go to 2 Timothy, uh, the second chapter. So it behooves you, brothers and sisters, that if you want to live, and this is talking about eternal life, brothers and sisters, if you want to live eternally, 
it behooves you to understand what is in the Bible, the Word of God, brothers and sisters. Uh, let's go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And we're going to read one verse, 2 Timothy chapter 2, and pick it up, brother, at verse 15. Go ahead. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He says study mm -hmm. to show mm -hmm. thyself approved. Mm -hmm. Study this word yes, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I was talking to a gentleman about a year or so ago, and uh, he told me that he was a member of the Catholic Church, and we're around the same age, and he said that he had gone to church all his life and never read the Bible. <laughs> never read the Bible. Mm -hmm. He had been a Catholic, he is a Catholic all his life, mm -hmm. and they never read the Bible. Mm -hmm. How can you study mm -hmm. to show yourself approved if you never go into the book and read what is in there, brothers and sisters? Yes, sir. What they do is they have a man that they will call father, even if he's only 20 years old and I could be 75, call him father, and this father is to interpret what thus saith the Lord to you. That's not studying, brothers and sisters, to show yourself approved. Let's go to sec just move on, skip on over to 2 Timothy 3rd chapter and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead, brother. There's no also that in the last days perilous, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetousness, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent. This incontinent means unruly, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying the power of the world from such turn away. For Skip down to verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. And this is Paul talking in the book of Timothy. Go ahead. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me into Antioch and Iconia and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. A lot of times folks come in and they knew brothers and sisters and they hear this thing and they think, oh my God, I've got this. I now understand it. And then they go and they tell their family members that they got it and they look at them like they done lost their mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because they are new, and people begin to persecute them for the word of God, they turn around, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. This is that seed that Jesus was talking about when a soul went to soul, brothers and sisters. A lot of times, uh, as, as soon as a person hears this word, Satan comes right behind him and snatch it out of him, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. So you have to be diligent with this word. You have to study to show yourself approved. Keep reading. Verse 13. No, it's first Timothy. Second Timothy okay. 3, and read that 13th verse. Well, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. He says, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. What they doing? They deceiving and being deceived. People know that December 25th ain't the birth, <laughs> birthday of Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. It's nowhere in the Bible. Mm -hmm. People know that Easter is pagan. We do it for the cheering. <laughs> well, you're going to go in the fire and you're going to take your cheering with you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Every... Every Easter, you have your Easter pageant and your Easter egg hunts. Mm -hmm. They know this is pagan, mm -hmm. even up to the White House. Mm -hmm. 
The scripture says spiritual wickedness in high places, brothers and sisters. You have to be careful, brothers and sisters, who you listen to. There's much deception out there in the world today, brothers and sisters. If it does not come out of this Bible, do not do it, brothers and sisters. Let's go to um, Revelation chapter 12. Where does deception come from? Where did it start, brothers and sisters? Revelation, the 12th chapter. And we're going to read verse 9. Revelation 12 and 9. Go ahead. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. Who and deceived the whole world? Satan. Satan, the devil, brothers and sisters. He deceived the whole world. He started the deception in Genesis, the third chapter, around verse 4, when he, when he was talking to Eve, and he said, Yea, hath God said you should not eat of every tree of the garden? And then Eve went on to tell him, Yea, we can eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of, 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 the, uh, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we should not eat of thereof, for in the day that we eat thereof, we should surely die. What did Satan tell her? He should not surely die. So he lied to her. That is where deception began at, brothers and sisters. Read that nine again. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Hold what you got right there, brother. I'm going to add something to Go back and read that fourth verse right there. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And when he was cast out, he brought a third of the angels with him, brothers and sisters. And this is a number that's innumerable, brothers and sisters. So... Satan and his angels, his minions are here on the earth, brothers and sisters. Let's go on, move a little bit further. Let's go to uh, 1 Timothy, the sixth chapter. So Satan is the arbiter of deception. But how does he operate, brothers and sisters? He operates through men, brothers and sisters. Now, you never hear the Sunday preachers talking about what the Bible is really about, which is everlasting life. The, the doctrine that they bring today, brothers and sisters, is the prosperity doctrine. That's all that you hear them talk about, is God told me to tell you that if you donate $1,000, that you're going to get a tenfold increase within 90 days, and it's always within 90 days for some reason. Mm -hmm. Let's pick it up at uh, 1 Timothy 6, and let's pick it up at verse 1. Um, verse 3, brother, go ahead. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doubting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, envy, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. I wish that they would read this, brothers and sisters. What does it say? Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute, a serious lacking of the truth, brothers and sisters, supposing that gain is godliness. What does he tell them, Brother Ezekiel? He says, from such, remove thyself. Get away from these people. They are leading you to error. The Bible is not about prosperity. It is about getting everlasting life, brothers and sisters. And that is the biggest, one of the biggest deceptions that you have going on in the world today. Let's go to 1 Peter, the fifth chapter. 1 Peter 5. 
I'm sorry. Did you with the Isaiah? Let's go to Isaiah 56. Thank you, brother. Isaiah 56. And we're going to pick it up. Isaiah 56. And we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Go ahead. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Watchmen. These are, these are preachers, pastors, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs that cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Go ahead. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough, and they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain from his quarter. Yea, they are greedy dogs which cannot, which can never have enough, and they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain mm -hmm. from his quarter or his dwelling place. Go ahead and read. Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. They ain't putting in no work, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. They're not studying to show themselves approved. Mm -hmm. They just open up the book and point to a scripture, <laughs> and then they say, well, this is what I'm going to talk about next Sunday. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That takes no effort, brothers and sisters. It takes time and effort to put together a lesson, brothers and sisters. You have to go line upon line and precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. You understand what I'm saying? But just pointing at the Bible, pointing at a page and bringing the scripture. I heard one say, we're going to read uh, the first part of the first <laughs> verse, part B. <laughs> This Bible ain't broken down into no A's and B's and C's, <laughs> brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. These are just scriptures, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. But he will read one and a half verses and then talk about him and his wife's vacation. <laughs> and then you ask somebody, well, what did the pastor talk about today? Well, pastor was in rare form. The choir was singing with, with the utmost spirit. Mm -hmm. But what did you learn? They couldn't tell you if you held a gun to their hand, brothers and sisters, because they ain't learned nothing. First Peter, let's go to, uh, did, you, did you finish? Uh, mm-hmm. That's it, 6 through 12. Okay. All right. Come, ye say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. Let's go to uh, First Timothy I'm sorry, let's go to 1 Peter 5. Getting ahead of myself. It get good to you. Yes, sir. 1 Peter 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. This is Peter talking. Go ahead. Feed the flock of God which is among you. He says, feed the flock of God which is among you. Feed them with what? Feed them with the word of God. Go ahead. Taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but, for, but of a ready mind. He says, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy money, but of a ready mind. Go ahead. Neither is being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. He says, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples mm -hmm. to the flock, brothers and sisters. Skip down to verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, and he is your adversary, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. He is trying to destroy God's creation as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That's why in Ephesians, Ephesians the sixth chapter, verses 10 through 18, it tells you to put on the whole armor of God, brothers and sisters. You have to keep yourself wrapped in this word, brothers and sisters, so that you can beware of the, your adversary, the devil. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah the 50th chapter. Jeremiah chapter 50.
and we're just going to read two verses, Jeremiah 50. He says, teach this word, but not for filthy lucre. Mm -hmm. If the pastors of this day and age wasn't getting paid, brothers and sisters, they wouldn't even be doing this job, brothers Amen. and sisters. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't even be doing it. Mm -hmm. But religion is big business mm -hmm. in today's world, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And they see it as such. It is not about salvation, brothers and sisters. It is about prosperity. And you can tell because money is all they talk about. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 50 and pick it up at verse 6. Go ahead, brother. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. Who they has caused them to go astray? Shepherds. Their shepherds. Mm -hmm. The leaders of the flock have caused them to go astray. Go ahead. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. All that found them have devoured them, and their adversaries said, We offend not, because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, even the Lord of the hope of their fathers. Well, wait a minute. That, that is a loaded scripture right there. You know what that says? It says that the rest of the world knows who we are. What does it say? All that found them have devoured them, and their adversaries say, we are fear not. It don't matter how we treat you. We can put our foot on your neck for 8 minutes and 46 seconds that you die. It does not offend the Lord because you have offended your God. He says, all that found them have devoured them, and their adversaries say, said, we offend not. Because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Let's move on a little bit further. He says their shepherds have led them astray. Let's go to Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. Take a look at these shepherds. Pick it up at Jeremiah 23 and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead, brother. Woe be to the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people. Pastors, shepherds, one and the same. Go ahead. Ye have scattered my flock, and have driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them again to their foes, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Skip down to verse 9. My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man, and like a man whom wine have overcome, because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing the land mourneth, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Both yea. prophet and priest are wicked. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, said the Lord. Skip down to verse 16. Thus said the Lord of hosts, Hearken unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you, that make you vain, that speak a vision of their own heart, and not of the, out of the mouth of the Lord. He said, Thus said the Lord of hosts, Listen not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. Mm -hmm. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah the 10th chapter and take a look at some of this vanity, brothers and sisters. Jeremiah 10. Pick it up at verse 1, brother. Go ahead. He is the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord. Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the sign of heavens, for the, he for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one covered tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with an axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. This sounds like a Christmas tree to me. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. They are upright at the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. Skip down to verse 8. But they are altogether brutish and foolish. The stock is a doctrine of vanity. Stop. 
tree, one and the same. But they are all together brutish and foolish. The stock, the tree, is a doctrine of vanities. Go into evil holidays, brother, and I want you to read the uh, heading up there. Mm -hmm. evil, uh, go ahead, bro. Evil holidays. Christian holidays are ancient pagan feasts that were ushered in by the Roman Catholic Church. During the rule of Emperor Constantine, Constantine was a pagan sun worshiper who had a Christian experience that wanted to unite his empire, but Christians and both Christian and pagan together. He achieved this by rewriting history and renaming pagan feasts with Christian names. So Constantine, a Roman emperor, he changed, uh, 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 he brought in paganism into the church. He mingled it, brothers and sisters. He also tried to change, or, or did try to change times and laws. And you can go into Daniel, the seventh chapter, and read that, brothers and sisters. But go ahead and read. Christmas. Christmas was celebrated by pagan sun worshippers for thousands of years before the Messiah was ever born. Christmas was celebrated, brothers and sisters, even before in the days of Jeremiah, brothers and sisters. They were celebrating uh, uh, Christmas before Christ was even born. So why are they trying to make Christ, uh, uh, why are they trying to make Christmas Jesus' birthday, brothers and sisters? Because uh, uh, Emperor Constantine tried to mingle his, uh, tried to mingle Christianity with paganism. That is why the winter solstice became Jesus' birthday. Jeremiah chapter 29. And pick it up at verse 4. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have called to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses and dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and begat sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city where I have called you to be carried away captive. Oh, wait a minute. What did he tell them? He said, seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captives. Seek the peace of the city. Go ahead, brother. And pray unto, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. For thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which ye call to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, said the Lord. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, said the Lord. Didn't Jesus tell you in Matthew the 24th chapter that, that many prophets would come and that they would use his name, they would come in his name? He's telling you right here, brothers and sisters, once again, for they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. Let's go to Ezekiel the 34th chapter. Ezekiel 34. And pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead, brother. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The disease have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick. Neither have you bound up that which was broken. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Neither have you sought that which was lost. But with forth and with cruelty have you ruled them. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth. And none did search or seek after them. Therefore, Skip down to verse uh, 9. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Skip down to verse 17. As for you, O my flock, thus said the Lord God, behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he goats. Seem it is a small thing unto you that ye have eaten of the good pasture, but you must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters, but you must find the residue with your feet. He says, Seem it is a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, 
but ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures and to have drunk of the deep waters. What are these deep waters? This is the word of God, brothers and sisters. But ye must foul the residue with your feet. Go ahead. And as for my flock, they eat that which you have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which you have fouled with your feet. And if the apostles and the prophets came back and heard the watered-down versions of what the people are being fed today, they would be shocked, brothers and sisters. They would be shocked. Nobody says repent. Mm -hmm. Everything that you do is okay as long as you put some money in the tithe box. Mm -hmm. That is not the Bible, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. The Bible is about repentance, forgiveness, salvation, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And let me add baptism to that. Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. 2 Corinthians 11. We're talking about the deception that is going on in the world today, brothers and sisters. 2 Corinthians 11, and pick it up at verse 1, brother. Go ahead. Well, to God, you could bear with me a little of my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused to you one husband, that I might present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. And this is Paul talking to the Corinthians. Go ahead. But I fear, lest by any means, that the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from, some, from the simplicity that is in Christ. He says, but I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve, in uh, Genesis 3rd chapter, verses 4 through 6, I believe it is, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled lead through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Go ahead. For if he that come and preach of another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not Wait, received. wait. You mean to tell me that somebody is out here preaching another Jesus? Well, the Jesus of the Sunday Sabbath, that's another Jesus. Because the Jesus of this Bible tells you all throughout the Bible that the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. So the Jesus of Sunday, Sabbath, brothers and sisters, that's another Jesus. The Jesus of Christmas, that's another Jesus, brothers and sisters. The Jesus of Easter, that's another Jesus. The Jesus of the new year beginning in the dead of wintertime, that's another Jesus. The Jesus of Halloween, that's another Jesus. It's not in the Bible, brothers and sisters. It is contrary to the teaching of God. That's another Jesus that you're being given every Sunday. And he told you, wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. This warning is for you, brothers and sisters. Pay attention to what the Bible is saying. Keep reading. Middle of four. Or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with them. That means don't do it. Skip down to verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful. For such, if they bring you this other Jesus, this Jesus of Sunday, the Sabbath day, if they bring you that, they are a false apostle. Go ahead. Deceitful workers. Deceitful workers. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And they transform themselves into the apostles of Christ. Keep reading. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Didn't he give Eve some information in the garden? Didn't he enlighten her, brothers and sisters? Yes, he did. But watch this, and pay special attention to this, brothers and sisters, because this is a deception as well, because people think that when they see a man standing up in front of a pew, brothers and sisters, that he is going to bring them the word of God. But everyone that's standing up here, brothers and sisters, is not a man of God. Pay attention to what we're getting ready to read. Read that verse, brother, 15. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed. His ministers? Whose ministers? Therefore, it is no great thing if Satan's ministers be transformed. Go ahead. As the ministers of righteousness. As ministers of righteousness. Go ahead. Whose end shall be according to their work. Whose end shall be according to their work. 
Satan has ministers, brothers and sisters, and he has them in droves. Jesus told you in Matthew 24, verse 11, many shall come and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many brothers and sisters. Let's go to 2 John, the sixth chapter. I got to speed it up. 2 John, the sixth chapter. And when you get it, brother, pick it up at verse 2 John 1, I'm sorry. 2 mm -hmm. John 1, and pick it up at verse 6. Go ahead. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye shall walk in it. For many deceivers are entered into the world, who confess not that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. He said, many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Go ahead. Look to yourself that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we will receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ have not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he have both the Father and the Son. For if there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. For he that bid him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Very good. So if somebody comes to you with another gospel, or another Jesus, brothers and sisters, you're not even supposed to bid them God's speed, or God be with you, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. How you going to say God be with you to somebody that's talking contrary to the word of God? I want you to go to Romans, the first chapter. I skipped it. I want to get this in there as much as possible. Romans, the first chapter. He say, if somebody come with another gospel, don't even bid them God's speed. Now, brother, if you're bringing me something contrary to the word of God, you just, I'm just going to get as far away from you as I possibly can. Romans, the first chapter, pick it up at verse 16, brother. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. What are they doing? They are holding the truth in unrighteousness. Didn't, didn't, didn't the scripture tell us that they are stepping on the word of God with their feet and feeding it to the people? Keep reading. Because that which may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the visible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they that are without excuse. They are without excuse because God has revealed this word to them, but they holding the truth and unrighteousness. Go ahead and read. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Read 22, go ahead. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Skip down to verse 28. And even if they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do, to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Let's go to Hosea, the fourth chapter. Hosea chapter 4. Hosea chapter 4, we're going to read one verse. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Hosea 4, and read that sixth verse. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou should be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. 
He says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Matthew 25. And read, start at 31. Go ahead, brother. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. We didn't read it, but, but the Lord has said he's going to judge between cattle and cattle, and this is that judgment. Go ahead. And he said, separate them one from another, as they separate the divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say to them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, and have the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked and ye clothed me, I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then said the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw, when saw we thee hungry, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye have done it, uh, done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then say he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. Ain't that what he said to him in Matthew the seventh chapter, verse twenty-three? Depart from me, ye workers. This, this, them people is talking about. Lord, have we not we prophesied in your name and cast out devils in your name and in your name all done all these uh, wonderful works? And what did he say? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Why did he never know you? Because you were you was doing all those things that you thought were. were correct for God, but you were not doing it according to godliness, brothers and sisters. Let's go to 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, and this is last, 1 Peter 4. And we're going to pick it up at verse 17. Go ahead and read, brother. For the time has come, that judgment must begin at the house of God. For the time has come, that judgment must begin where? At the house of God, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely shall be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? He says, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, brothers and sisters, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Brothers and sisters, you better get in this book and find out what thus said the Lord. There you have it. Take heed that no man deceive you. I hope you got some understanding out of this lesson.